Hello and welcome to everybody. My guest today is Lindsay Van Zandt. So, can you please talk about the three men's titles fights? The what title fights? The one I just had? No, just about the general. You know, the general titles that you earned, general opponents, some achievements, some of the best things from career, and then we go forward. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I I mean, the best thing that, like, my last year was, was the best year ever. I, um, you know, I won some and I lost one, some, but I got to fight at Madison Square Garden, and I got to fight in Japan against Mina, and uh, it was a really great experience. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting up there. I've had 10 pro fights now, which is crazy to say. And uh, I'm just excited to keep going and keep improving and keep getting that experience level up and get a title hopefully this year. Yeah, I hope too. When did you kick off your MMA run? When did you start training? Um, I started training, I mean, I started Taekwondo when I was seven. And then I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when I was 13. So I've been training basically my whole life and uh, it's, it's finally paying off. <laughs> What can I say about your nickname? Uh, Danzel? Yes. Um, it was a combination of Claude Van Dam, so, and then like combined with Diesel, so like Van Damsel, and then it kind of just got shortened to Danzel, so it's kind of just became my nickname. It's kind of a very much original nickname. Every fighter has something okay. original. Yours is one of the most original I've ever seen. Uh, Thank you, yeah. <laughs> How would you describe your fighting style? Do you have uh, some special martial art or you're a mixed martial artist? Um, I try to be well-rounded mixed martial artist. Um, so I'm always trying to improve on my, you know, my weaknesses. But I would say my ground game is um, my like best skill. Um, but I love it all. I love Muay Thai. I'm, I'm trying to work on my hands more and I'm getting more comfortable standing up. I love standing up. Um, nothing's better than like hitting someone in the face and like seeing it do damage, which just sounds really crazy, but it's fun when you're like hard work pays off and you can knock someone down. And especially cause you know, I'm in the smallest weight class 105. Like they don't think we have power down here. So, you know, I got to show them, show them what's up. <laughs> Do you have a trademark move? Because now, now I'm kind of confused. You said both ground, uh, stand up, so on. Do you have some that is your, your own trademark? Um, I finished a bunch of fights with some elbows on the ground like early on in my pro career, so that kind of was like, oh, you're gonna knock me down with elbows and stuff. So I mean, I would I would love to get like a knockout standing up with an elbow, um, but I don't know if I have a trademark move. Um, you know, I love being on the ground and um, submitting people too. Like I've gotten some armbar finishes. Um, I've gotten really close to some triangle finishes, man. So I'm working on that one. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really have like one move that like people are like I'll oh, go for it. Um, but yeah. I try to change it up. <laughs> About elbows on the ground, do you prefer front elbows or, you know, when you're in the half guard, front elbow or rear elbow? Um, probably my rear elbow. I feel like it has more power. But, you know, we gotta work on the left one a little bit. But the right one is pretty powerful, so. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You said you, you fight in a very little weight division and people think uh, you don't have power, so... Um, how hard it is to fight in the in such a small division? I mean, people have wrong opinions and so on. How do you deal with it? Um, you know, it's it is what it is. It's the only thing that's hard is that um, finding like a lot of training partners at my skill level that are smaller, so I don't get injured. But um, everybody's really cool. I've trained with a lot of guys and stuff and and uh, girls, but they're just always bigger than me, so it's a little harder um, because. When you're small, like there's different openings and stuff. So um, I try to find uh, some people that are smaller to my size so I can figure stuff out. But yeah, that's no, a little hard size wise, but it's fun. It makes it tougher. <laughs> can we talk on your first amateur fight? Oh, it was so long ago. Um, it was when I was 18. I had my first uh, Muay Thai fight. And then when I was, I think I was like 20, I had my first um, amateur MMA fight. Um, so which one do you want to go about? <laughs> I was about MMA, but if you want to talk Muay Thai, go ahead. Um, okay, well the Muay Thai one is a funny story, so you might want to okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I, um, at that point, like my family, uh, my parents weren't really into me fighting, so I kind of lied to them and told them I was visiting a friend in college, uh, in Virginia, and I went to the WKA tournament, and it was my like, first Muay Thai fight with a friend. And um, I won. It was a really close fight. Um, I actually ended up hitting him all with an awesome head kick in the, in the last round. But the whole experience was crazy because my parents ended up finding out that I went down there and it was it was bad. And I got in trouble. But like after.
after that fight, I was like, oh my god, like being in the ring was like so cool, and it's like, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. So it was like a really awesome experience. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty crazy story. <laughs> uh, a lot of details in there, but that's the short version. <laughs> so you kicked off as a rebel. This is great. Now looking bit, back, yeah. looking back at your amateur MMA career, I saw you fought Jillian Robertson. Is she the toughest opponent you've ever met, or there was a tougher one? Um, I got her um, in the earliest, like pretty early in her career. I mean, she was she was young. I don't even know how she went on five. We still laugh about it to this day. I actually visited her in a ATT in Florida uh, about a year ago, and we were just cracking up. She's like, "Yeah, I don't know how I went on five. Yeah, she was tall." No, but she was a tough opponent. I think she was 8-1 at the time. I was, I think it was my third amateur fight or something. It was for the title. I ended up losing to her. Um, a bad decision. But no, it was a tough fight. Yeah, I remember I, we started the fight. And um, the fight prior to her, I lost. So I went up a weight class at 115. And I fought another tough girl, Caitlin uh, Salmon. And she submitted me with an arm bar in the second round. So when I came out to Jillian... And she tried to arm bar me, like literally the first, maybe like first 30 seconds of the round. I was like, no, this is not happening again. Somehow I got out of the arm bar, but I just remember it like slow motion in my head. Like, I will not tap to another arm bar right now. Like, this could not happen again. So it was a very cool fight. Uh, I passed, I passed that point, but uh, still lost a one. But, you know, she deserves it. She's a beast and she's killing it in the UFC. So I'm uh, happy to say for her. <laughs> Can you talk about your first professional MMA fight, but not not just fight, I mean, how were you feeling before the fight? I mean, uh, when you transition from amateur to pro, it got to be a big moment for everybody in everybody's life. So let's go from the beginning and then continue to the fight. Okay, cool, yeah. No, I was excited. Um, you know, I was waiting a while for, you know, myself to put on pro. Um, I took some time off after my last amateur fight because I lost. Um, to Jillian DeCorsi, who's also fighting soon, and Invicta, shout out to her, she's awesome. Um, that was a close fight. Again, having a triangle, very close finish, very annoying, so I'm working on that still. Uh, <laughs> still have it But, um, no, yeah, I took a lot of time off before I went pro after that fight, and, um, the fight was in Philadelphia, and I'm a big Rocky fan, so, um, it was really cool, like, leading up to the fight, like, knowing I was going to be fighting in Philly, and, um, it was a really awesome fight camp. I had a lot of a good training point on that precision, mixed martial arts in the KFC. It was really awesome, get me ready for my first pro fight. Um, you know, it was really cool. Everybody went down and had a good time. And uh, like the day before, we uh, went and climbed the stairs up to the Rocky statue, and it just felt really good. And I shadow boxing up, up top, and it was just it was really fun. And I just felt like I was ready. And and, uh, and then when I was in there, I was just it felt really good. I actually felt really strong. Um, Katie saw it's, it's a small, it's a small world, you know, because um, you start seeing the same people over and over again, and everybody's moving and working their way up and fights and stuff. And I just, my first fight was against um, Katie Saul in Delhi, and she's awesome. I just saw her in Victor not too long ago, and she's doing her thing in Ireland now. But um, yeah, it's cool to see the girls that you fought again, and I'm sure I'll face most of them again because it's a small division. But yeah, no, it was, it felt good to go pro, and it was something that you know I was looking forward to. And now here I am, ten fights in, and I'm. Still going and still, still living my dreams, so it's pretty exciting. <laughs> How did you think KOD your next opponent? Um, after Katie? Yes. Uh, yeah, my second fight was against, uh, what was her name? Was it the Rachel? one I finished on the ground with elbows, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I, uh, she's a tough chick, man. Um, I fought like a month later or something like that, like a month and a half later. And, um... Yeah, I, I broke her nose with an elbow, and I remember feeling it and landing it and hearing it, and I was like, oh my god, uh, elbows are dangerous, and uh, I remember the ref stopped it, and she stood up, and she looked at me, like, I don't know why they stopped that, and I'm like, whoa, this girl's crazy, like, she's tough, man, um, my coach was laughing, because I think I, when, like, I was hitting her, like, some blood squirted out on his face, <laughs> And, and stuff, but no, yeah, it was crazy that, that yeah, she was a tough chick. chick. Um, that, that was a fun fight because I, I, you know, I was coming off the high of my other fight, fight and uh, I just wanted to have fun in there, and uh, I was trying, <coughs> trying new things and stuff in there, so it was fun. Yeah, I guess so. So, Kelly D'Angelo, was this uh, your first professional loss, or? Yeah, uh, that way. Sorry, my sister was calling. Um, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a tough loss. Um, I just signed with Invicta. 
and it was my first Invicta fight, and she was a tough girl. That was her first fight at 105 because she was playing up at 115, which props to her for making 105, and she's a tough girl. Like, I'll see you again, too. She's actually fighting uh, coming up, too, on Invicta, so I can't wait to watch all these girls fight. But, yeah, she was a sweetheart. I remember her coming in after the fight and saying, like, don't worry, girl, it's that you're going to be great. Like, keep walking. She's a really sweet girl. She's a firefighter, too. She's a badass chick. <laughs> How did your belt or debut go? Uh, it was really good. I actually, that was when I, that was last year. I just started, um, I just visited ATT, so it was, it was cool to go down there and train with uh, some awesome chicks down there. I got to train a little bit with Tisha Torres as well, and, um, yeah, and I got that fight when I was down there. I got the call, and I was like, hey, you want to fight for a belt tour? And I was like, yeah. So, like, that was, like, a month out, and, um, yeah, I fought Tabitha, and she, that girl there, and she, uh, she was she was a tough chick too. They're all tough, man. Um, but she was she was cool. I um finished. I got TKO. That was like my first like TKO. She I hit her with um I think it was like a, a left hook and then a cross and she dropped she dropped. I just remember her dropping so fast to the ground. Um and I was like whoa did that just happen and like the ref just stopped it right away. And some people think that it was like an early stoppage, but um maybe it was. Um but I mean I was I think I said in my post fight interview like I'm glad they stopped it because I was gonna go ham on her face. <laughs> Because, because, like, I was going to just keep, you know, punching punch it on until I stopped it. So I, I think it was a good stoppage by the ref. Um, but I never saw someone drop so fast. So I was like, oh, so cool. Like, I started getting more confident in my hands. So I was excited. <laughs> All right. I was about to ask you on the origin of your Sherdog photo. You have the USA colors, which uh, shows even more respect. So uh, about uh, the origin of Sherdog photo, which was that fight? Uh... I'm sorry, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Um, are you talking about the, sh the walkout shots I ran? Yeah. Um, I guess I made at um, Just Taught Apparel. But um, they just, they kind of design it. Yeah, they they kind of come up with the idea and um, they were trying to, I don't know, like, it was an awesome design and they came up with it. So I asked them. But yeah, no, it was really cool. And, yeah, we always want to pay respect and stuff. So we always keep the, the flag on, on our shoulder and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. When I see a fighter having the colors of his own country, it it means even more respect, you know. And yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. gotta represent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even I don't know if you were watching me, but I wear Bulgarian whenever I comment. I wear Bulgarians, and uh, that's my country. So I pretty much respect fighters who respect their own country. So yes, gotta you know. But it's where you live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't live there, but I was born there, and you know, uh -huh. traditions, such things. And about your first fight with Rina Kubota, uh, how did it go? First fight. Um, that was the one at Madison Square Garden, and it was literally one of the best days of my life. Uh, it was really cool because um, my whole family was there, and they're finally like supporting me fighting and stuff. So that was like a really big deal for me to have my whole family there. And, uh, you know, it's huge. Madison Square Garden is, like, everybody dreams to fight there. So I just felt so blessed to be able to fight there. And um, this, that was the first time Lena was traveling to New York. So that was cool that she got to, to experience the travels and stuff. And, um, you know, so we got to fight. And uh, it went perfectly as planned, uh, the fight camp. Literally, like, everything came together perfectly. I went in there. I did what I was supposed to do. I stuck to the game plan. And... You know, I, I choked her out and she went unconscious and I was like, oh my god, and I just started crying because I was so excited that it went that way. And to have such a quick finish in the first round against somebody who's so good. So, um, you know, when I got the opportunity to fight her again in Japan, I was like, oh yeah, I'll do it again. Um, obviously my fight didn't go as well and I lost, but, um, you know, now we have a thong, so I'll be more if I'm going to find a place in between, like in Cali or Hawaii or something. <laughs> it would be awesome. About Shina Van Jose, that leg kick, how it kind of remind me, you know, if you were watching Mirko Kroka versus Shungo Oyama, it's kind of old fight, don't know whether you looked it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's cool, you know, that's awesome that you're like comparing it to them because that's the badasses. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I was really working on leg kicks actually leading up to that fight with Chris Mysterio, Stocky, and Muay Thai, and um, so I was so excited, I was, I was working on the step back leg kick, and um, the timing on that kick when I like watched the replays, I'm like, ah, oh, it was so perfect. Like I can't believe I did that. And uh, I mean, I felt bad after because I didn't want to injure her because she just came off like 
a knee surgery like the year before or something. It was a horse fight back. So I felt really bad, but I was just really excited about my technique and how, how far I came with the leg kick and stuff. But yeah, I was, I was like, oh my God, I mean, that's not the way I want to finish it. But hey, my leg kicks are powerful, you know, if they land bite like that. So it was cool. And Holly, and Holly Berry was in the, the uh, stand. So I was like, Holly, what's up? She was really cool. I can't, I can't wait for her movie to come out, so shout out, out to her. <laughs> uh, which kind of uh, kick was it? Was it a Mao Thai version, a kickboxing version, or or something your own? Uh, Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Yes. Yes, it was a great kick, you know. You know, uh, kind of comparing to Mirko Kroka because, uh, you know, the transition of his right kick. Uh, many people think it's a kickboxing version, he goes like this, but I'm a kickboxer for a long period of time. And with his left he does this, but he, with his right he does this, like downward, okay. you know? Like yeah. downward, yeah. Yeah, that's like, that's why I say it kind of reminded me, because, you, you know, oh. I've followed Mirko Krokop since his first fight, and I literally know all about his fights, private life, that's and awesome. so on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah, yeah that's so cool, cool. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you said about second fight versus Rina Kubota, it's okay, but uh, now let me ask you one question. About Rising and about Western based promotions, oh, these cats are cute. This is my baby, I just got him. His name's Crew. Say hi, Crew. Hey. Kitty. He's not reacting, he's angry. <laughs> oh, he's cute. All right. Is there a big difference between rising and western-based promotions? Because some people say eastern promotions are tougher. Some say western are tougher. Some say one FC is tougher. Some say UFC is tougher. What's your experience? Compare Bellator and other promotions you were with eastern yeah. promotions. Um, I think I mean it's just a change in uh, you know the rule set. So I don't think it's that. I mean a fight is a fight, and as long as you know the rules and you. Uh, Understand, understand the rules, rules. It's, it's, you know, you know it's a fight, so, so just do what you can, can and uh, be careful. careful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah no, the rules are a little different, different so, so I had to be careful of, obviously, high kicks when I was on the ground and knees to the face while I was on the ground, so it was a little different, like, more more to think about and worry about, but I wouldn't, like, at all use that as an excuse or anything, and I just think a fight's a fight, so if you're in a bang or the cage, it doesn't matter, like, you're there to fight, it's like, you know, so I just, I don't think it's that big of a difference. But, but um, it's, it's definitely, definitely like a different experience, you know, with the crowd and like, you know, traveling takes a lot out of you and stuff. So it was cool to experience that and to, to see, like, I feel like uh, fighters don't get enough respect for like all the traveling they do. And so it's a lot on your body and um, getting ready for a fight. And I already get so nervous as it is traveling. So like to do that and fight, it was really cool. I really liked it. And uh, definitely want to do more of it because I want to experience the world. And it's cool when you get to do that and fight and get paid and have a good time. So. I'm down to keep, keep keep doing that. <laughs> Since I'm a big cat lover like you too, I was about to ask you one question. Yeah. When you play with cat, is it... Uh, uh, people say in my country that a uh, cat gathers negative energy and relaxes you. Is it true or not? Oh, yes. I love coming home to these guys. My other ones over there are sleeping, but... um, Yeah, no, they're so sweet. They're so sweet, they just want to cuddle. Like, he always just comes up in my lap uh, and snuggles. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a sweetheart. Um, my cats are awesome. I love them. <laughs> I probably post too much, but I can't help it. They're too cute. <laughs> yeah. But you have two cats and they don't fight. Oh no, they love each other. Um, they play all the time. They have, they don't fight at all. They just have a good time. They play. They snuggle. They're just really good. <laughs> are they nurtured? Or not? Are they nurtured or not? Uh, my one is. He's too young yet. I just got him. He's got to be neutered in like two months. He's only like, he's like four and a half months right now. Oh, he's too little, you know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of so much sorry when I feel that cat has to go such procedure. But if you want to home cat, I know. Yeah. I know. I, I don't want to do it, but I know that it, it's better off in the long run for both of them. And I don't want kitties all over the place. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> two, is, two is enough for me. <laughs> Well, two cats are cute. My brother he has three of them, and they don't, you know, they then they don't pretty much play with him. But when I come, all three jump to play with me. He kind of, you know, oh, they he, love you. no, he kind of too harsh towards them. When they see me, I'm not. And you're so sweet to them. That's, see, they they know that, so that's why they want to play with you. <laughs> yeah, I think the cat is watching at me now. Aww. Ah, here it is. All right. Uh, would you like uh, to add uh, something else to greet someone, maybe sponsors or? 
Oh, oh awesome. awesome. Yeah, so I, I, I just want to pair all, uh, get my gear online still. It's awesome. Um, Kings, Kings of Fitness, fitness. I'm, I'm going to work out with them later. later. Um, they're amazing and help me out all the time, getting ready for fights and making me stronger. Um, get get some tickets, guys. The whole accolade. I just uh, got out on massage yesterday. It's really cool because there's me. <laughs> yeah. Fight. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, ah, get gift certificates, guys. It's fun, and, and hope we'll fix you. <laughs> so yeah, shout out to all the sponsors. Shout out to my management team, um, Sean Rockwell. He's amazing, and uh, he's always dealing with all the fighters, and he's he's always gotten the best fights, and he's really been there for me. So uh, shout out to them too. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I enjoyed pretty thank much, you. and I like your kids. Oh, thank you. I'll keep posting so you can see them all the time. <laughs> oh, of course I will. No worries. I mean, if you have seen, I don't have my own cat because I'm not home uh, all the time, you know. But uh, yeah. whenever I see a cat, I mean, even when I see it in the street, cats run towards me. They know who loves them. They know. They're like, let's play. Oh, okay, he's falling asleep. Yeah, I see. He's so cute. Uh, so he's falling asleep, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> All right. This is the first time I'm interviewing someone who's a big cat lover. I interviewed Stavi yeah. Konum earlier. I interviewed. Shout out! Shout, shout out to cat lovers. Yeah. <laughs> I think Stavi Konum is gonna like this one. I interviewed him, but he didn't have a camera. So I'm watching his cat on Instagram all the time. But he didn't Aww. have a camera then. But I'm sure I will tag him in this video, and he will like it. Oh, awesome! Thank, thank you so, so much, much for having me. me. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for enjoying this interview, and please. Uh, Please, uh, I hope we'll talk some other time and please uh, keep yes. uh, keep fighting and keep playing with your cats. They are so amazing. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. I'll try to post this tomorrow. Okay, okay perfect. All right. That's perfect. Thank you. I will share it. It will be awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Goodbye, Lindsay. Have a good night. <laughs>